probably going to start by cutting the koalas fur. We've used a 10 by 10 stained glass in gunmetal grey, a light grey, ash grey and a white. So to achieve this little cut, we are using our mountain cutters today. And we're just going to cut it diagonally. So this will just give you some irregular shapes. And then do a couple of our different colours just for the shading. Now with the board we've got here, this is one that we've cut out with our laser cutter and they come already pre-engraved so your pattern's already on there. I've taken a colouring in pencil and I've just drawn a few lines just to help me stick with the flow of the direction of the glass I want it to go. So it's going to give it like a fur look. So by drawing these on, you just sort of stay on track. And back this way. So with these little cuts here, you see how it's sort of got raggy sort of ends. That's what you sort of want. That's going to be the start of your fur. So we're using Wow Bond glue today. You just place some pointy ends just hanging over the ends slightly. You can mix your shading and that's what we've done up here. We've got a few different coloured shades in there. If you get a little triangle piece like that, you can just top, chop the tip off and it'll give you another little leggy piece. So you're just going to continue on with your little pieces that you've chopped up through here, mixing your mix of dark and white grey together. Um, just through the ears, we have feathered a few um, little white bits, so you can do that for shading, that's always quite nice. Um, same thing if you just stick with those lines, you're not going to go wrong with your your pattern of your koala and it's going to give you a fur like look. Just group them all together. Um, the nose we've used a stained glass black stick. Um, we've just achieved, we've cut this into three pieces. So you can start by putting your stick on there. Just cutting it roughly to the size that you may need. I'm just going to give this a round shape there. Using your round mill cutters. Just cut off the excess and then just go back and check it. Now you can just soften those points off and the way you can do that if you don't have a grinder is to put your cutters on an angle, pop it in there and just wait till you hear that biting noise. So ever so slightly and that just softens those points off. And then we'll just tidy up these sides a wee bit. Okay, and I'm going to cut it a little bit smaller because I like to have three little pieces there. Just cut that off. And there's your first bit there, and we can use this one for the second bit. Let's have a look. So just shake that off a little bit at the sides. So as long as those ends meet up with the ones at the top there, so you've got that nice flow. Next one is the top one. So this takes a little bit of imagination, and you can always use a bit of tracing paper to trace out its nose, or you can just sort of roughly gauge where it's going to go. So again, cut the excess off. As I said, as long as the ends meet up, put a little bit of gap between them, and the bear's nose. For the eyes, we've used two little black round glass droplets. And with our leftover scrap that we've got from our nose, we can cut some real skinny pieces for his little mouth here. The way you do those is put your cutters on an angle, start diagonally working in, just doing really tiny little cuts. Always cover it in your hand if you need to, so if you're trying to find those little pieces. So a little piece might be perfect for here. Maybe this one for the other side. 
and that's the start of his face. Uh, the next thing with the leftover black stained glass is you can use it to put little tiny tips like we've done here for his claws so they can just be popped in now. Um, just tiny little diagonal shapes. So glue those in place. Yeah, and I, you can see we've got the different shading down here by his arm, so that just makes it more noticeable that it, this is his arm, then it goes into his little tummy here. Next thing we've got the tree branch. I find it helps to draw a couple of lines. See how I've just made a few uh, lines here just to make the cutting a little bit easier because there's a few small pieces there. So by doing that, it just helps you to um, get an idea what sort of shape you need to cut. Um, and then obviously the rest I've gone up in different sort of sizes, which gets a bit easier up here. We've used a dark brown chocolate mousse stained glass. And these have got a really nice pattern on them too. So what you want to do with these pieces is cut them down to some workable pieces. And they cut easy with the round wheel cutters. We have a few different... You see they've got that nice lines on there, so it's quite perfect for his um, tree branch. So we're going to start down here. So we can see it's roughly almost like a little triangle shape. So we're just going to get to a nice smaller piece. Pop it onto there. We cut out a little bit for his toenails. So you should have those glued on. It makes it easier to navigate the glass around there. You see the sort of shape that I'm going for? A little bit off that side and just trim if you need to yeah, it should be okay there next one down here I've got that one's gonna fit perfectly but I need to round underneath it same thing with the cover and just on an angle that just softens it it should fit in nicely there and then a little tiny piece there the same will be on the other side a little smaller piece here and as you go up you're going to have some nice bigger pieces you just sort of roughly gauge how wide you want them it's going to go there so you can see straight away i've got his toe there so i'm just going to draw a little cut there and take that out that should fit in nicely there and then just carry on up way up the top of the tree, cut that off there, then fill in the other side. So that would be his branch all the way up. With the leaves, I do have some already that are pre-cut that you can buy online. We've got these ones already that are pre-cut. Um, uh, little stalks, same thing again with your brown leftover glass you have from your trunk. Uh, holding it diagonally, you can get some really tiny really tiny skinny pieces and they work quite nice to feather out on the branches and that's what we've used up here so just little irregular shapes and that just helps to feed the leaves off to there so you don't have to stick to the pattern we've done here um, the one I've actually done on here I've added more branches up the side I've actually put more leaves in so you do have that option um, if you are familiar using a stained glass cutter, um, you can use stained glass to cut the leaves. Uh, same thing again, get it down to a smaller size to cut. Running pliers helps to snap it. And then just doing a couple of leaf shapes. You can draw these on or if you can freehand cut them. And that's your own leaves. You can add ones in. You can actually do slightly bigger ones. You make them a little bit fatter, a little bit wider. Coming in like that. Snapping it again. And then what I've done with some of them in here, I've just run the cutter up the middle. And an angle. And that's giving you two petals. You can actually put them apart and have them like that there or put them back together with a wee gap up the middle. So that's all the leaves. I've done a few little um, gum nuts here um, using the same stained glass I've used for the trunk. Cutting it down into some square sizes. Maybe a little bit smaller than that. Just sort of gum nut sizes. That's basically the start of your gum nut. 
I'm just going to round this corner and that corner. So same thing, colours on an angle. It's just ever so slightly hearing that biting noise. I'm just getting rid of those little points. And that's got a nice rounded shape. And then to get a little scoop out of the middle, I've put my cutters in an angle, pop the tile in, and just ever so slightly, and see how you get a little bit of a scoop. For the gum leaf flowers, I've used pink cotton candy stained glass. Same thing again, holding it diagonally, just biting little tiny bits off it. And that's gonna give you some nice, lots of raggy little shapes which is what you want to fill in. I'll pinch make it a little bit smaller and that's just those shapes there. So just pick up the little scraps you've got. They just come out to be really nice sizes. Chop off the wider ends. You just want the little tiny ends in there. And glue them all back in. I find with this part it's easier to put a little circle of glue down and then put them down and place these. Maybe a pair of tweezers will come in handy. But these shapes are perfect. And that's your little gum nut. Same thing again, you've got your little stalk that can go onto them. And that's what we've done here, we've just grouped a few together. Um, the background, we've used indigo stained glass. This is beautiful. Um, so we do sell it in sheets or we do have it in small boxes. Um, same thing again, very easy to cut with your glass cutters. Um, maybe just wear glasses when you are cutting the glass. Just get them down to some small workable pieces. And always start with a nice tidy straight edge when you're working along the top. So for example, you might put this one up here. So a nice straight edge there. So always keep it tidy. And then it's just a matter of filling in as you go. You can use all different sizes. Sort of work from the top down and then you can work from the koala back up. So you're not going to end up having working all the way in and putting little tiny pieces in here. So kind of work in a wee bit and then back out. And uh, that's what he should look like. We've used a gunmetal grout and a light grey grout. A uh, truffle grout for the trunk. So we'll show you that in our next um, tutorial. the two grouts together I'm just blending them so I am using my fingers <laughs> only because I've got dark grey uh, gunmetal grey here and I've just done a brown there um, I'm not worried too much about mask taping each colour because I sort of want to smudge them together so it's not like a definite line um, hence using the fingers as you can see I'm coming up now to the the grey I'm just sort of pushing it in there with one of my clean fingers I'm just sort of brushing it backwards so I'm not too worried if it's going into the grey I'm just going to sort of smudge it back just so it blends in more than being a definite line so it is going to take a little while but it just saves um, having to mask tape it and I just want to have a bit more of a natural look not a definite line between each colour so they'll just blend in nicely and then just cotton butt it through dry finger off and you'll see here um, wet it you just see here, you can just smudge it. And just dry it off there. Yeah, so they blend in quite nicely. I'll just carry on to do around here and we'll see how it looks. And I'll just dry it off, clean it as I go with my finger. I've been very gentle because it is stained glass, glass bits. So as I go, I'm just doing a tidy grouting, just sort of feathering off any excess grout. I'm going to clean it off. Um, it looks like the grout's everywhere, which it's not too bad. So I've got a little bit of water and a paintbrush, and now I'm just going to slowly wipe off. And as you can see, the little bit of water on my paintbrush, I'm just kind of blending, just softening off the mixing of the colours. And making sure that the gaps are filled as well. 
So it's just um, an easy way of getting the, the blending together. So same thing again. If you've got a bit too much grey in your darker grey, just a bit more water will help to sort of water it down. And that way you can check if your gaps, if there's any gaps in it. Yeah, so I'm just going to go through and just see here, it's sort of got a dark. I'm just going to soften it with a bit of water. That just helps to merge that into the dark ones. And then you get a nice sort of a smudge look. It's not going to be a definite line between the two. And that's what I want it to look like. But, so I'll keep cleaning and hopefully we'll have it all finished soon.